What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. And first off, before I get into this video, I just want to say that for the next few weeks, I will be scaling back the activity on this channel um, and be mostly focusing on doing uploads just due to the hectic schedule that I have over the next month and a bit. I may do a surprise live stream here or there, so please make sure that you have the notification bell switched on and subscribe if you are new. But in general, I'll just be floating around in the background, but I still will try and keep bringing you with that content so you can hear your boy's voice again, of course. Now, back to this video, and I came across this article, which links will be posted in the description box below. And it looks as if that there are some major changes happening in the beauty industry. That means that Afro hair will now be taught by all of those going into the hairdressing industry. I'm not sure if that means all those who have been trained will be retrospectively um, trained again. But I do know going forward, they will be trained, you know, in Afro hair as well as currently Eurocentric um, hair. The aim, of course, is to make everything inclusive and integrated, which sounds positive. But my question is, will this be a good or bad move when it comes to black owned businesses in terms of its impact? I mean, will it go the same route as when it comes to uh, black hair and skincare products, which in most places across the UK, particularly where I'm at, a lot of them are controlled by South Asians. There are some black owned ones, but most of them are controlled by non-black people. If you look at the stats when it comes to salons, 1% of them cater to Afro hair. Now, of course, of course, take this stat with a pinch of salt because we all know how things go when it comes to hair and how things operate. This is only talk about registered salons and it doesn't include, you know, family members, friends, you go to your houses and those kind of places and people who you just, you can do hair who aren't registered. And of course it doesn't include, you know, black women who do their own hair. So again, take that stat with a pinch of salt, but just in general, you can see the discrepancy when it comes to those who can cater for Afro hair and which is why you have to do what you have to do. Um, but personally though, I don't see it having that same impact as, um, South Asians owning hair and skincare products or even how big chain stores have killed off the corner shop because when it comes to hair especially when it comes to black women it's a whole different kettle of fish even for male even for men black men when we go to the barbers it's never a simple case of you know you look at a barber you think yeah we can go to that barber no 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 you want to make sure you want to scope out the place you want to make sure that they know how to cut black people here particularly if you're not going to a, you know, a black barber. And if you are going to a black barber, you still want to make sure you can trust that barber to cut your hair the way how you want it to be cut and also be consistent. And once you do find that barber, you, you know, you don't just move. We stay with that barber for a flipping lifetime. It's only out of necessity that we have to move. So I can only imagine it's 10 times worse when it comes to black women, especially when I've spoken to a lot of black women, they always tell me their problems that they have trying to find someone who can do their hair properly. So the only way how I do see this having a major impact is if black women are going to be employed into the mainstream hair salons. Now, that would have a different look and feel, in my humble opinion. Of course, let me know in the comment section if you disagree. But I think that would have a different look on the high street because I think a lot of black women, when they go there, they see that there are black women actually standing other black women's hair and more black people going into it. They're like, you know what? Yes, at least I can go in there and see what it's about, trust it, and obviously find out whether they can trust the, um, the person doing their hair. But other than that, I still see a lot of, you know, it's still going to be dominated in the same sense of you have black people doing black people here and you have obviously, um, and, and other the like, or certain white people who you trust, but I don't see it being a massive shakeup. It's a, it sounds like a positive move, but for now, I don't think it's going to have a massive impact in regards to black um, business in terms of hair care. Again, I could be wrong. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think black women will actually move out in droves or do you think it'll still be the same old, same old, we don't trust um, anyone else doing our hair and so like you know like me as a man i only trust certain people doing um cutting my hair etc etc so let me know in the comment section whether you think this is a good or bad move until next time i'm out